training camps for potential warriors, sectarian troopers within a secular state. As minorities grow fearful of their wrath, are India's Hindu nationalists threatening the country's stability? We asked journalist Mandakini Galot to investigate. It's been four days since 150 Muslims fled their village and sought shelter in this police station 15 kilometers away. On May 25th, a mob of 2,000 heavily armed Hindus attacked the Muslim community in Atali, a village in the North Indian state of Haryana. The local Hindu community opposed plans to build a mosque in the village. When construction went ahead anyway, they took matters into their own hands. Ishak Nambardar has spent the last four days mediating with the police to try and secure protection for his community. For now, he and the other Muslim villagers are still too afraid to return home. प्रशासन तो हमारे को यही है कि भाई तुम गांव जाओ शांति बनी हुई है शांति बनी है प्रशासन के सामने ही जब वो दो तीन बार झगड़े हो चुके हैं जिस दिन ये झगड़ा हुआ था उस दिन भी पुलिस मौजूद थी वहाँ पर आपको ये कैसे पता कि ये हिंदू हैं कुछ नारे का बोल रहे थे बोल रहे थे वो हर हर और क्या क्या इस तरीके से लगा रहे थे Most of the Muslim-owned houses and businesses in Atali have now been completely destroyed. There's still a lot of police everywhere, the police and the paramilitary, there's barricades everywhere, uh, still a lot of tension in the air. The police will be deployed here in unusually large numbers over the next few months. But the battle lines are now clearly drawn and many fear tensions may boil over into violence again. Atali is not an isolated case. It forms part of a larger pattern of violence against religious minorities. In 2013, one of the most notorious attacks occurred in Muzaffar Nagar, a town in Uttar Pradesh. That incident left 62 people dead. According to a leading Christian rights group, at least 600 similar attacks have taken place since May 2014, when Narendra Modi, a Hindu nationalist and leader of the right-wing BJP party became Prime Minister of India. 149 of these assaults were against Christians. The rest were targeted at the country's Muslim community. The attacks, say critics, are being orchestrated by Hindu nationalist groups affiliated to the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh or the RSS. Prime Minister Modi is a lifelong member of the RSS. In 2014, its backing was crucial in helping the BJP win the election. Since then, emboldened by the result, Modi's most extreme nationalist supporters have routinely taken to the streets, using violence and intimidation to press their claim for a purely Hindu India. But this is happening in a secular nation, where religious freedom is supposed to be enshrined in the constitution. My country, India, has always been home to a diverse mix of religions that have coexisted in relative harmony. 
But the news in recent months has been pretty disturbing. Each morning brings with it news of fresh and deadly attacks against minorities and others who dare to question the core beliefs of the movement. As a Hindu, I also believe that they've misappropriated my religion, whose core tenets continue to be peace and tolerance. Most attacks on minorities go unpunished. But when the authorities do dig a little deeper, the finger of suspicion usually points to radical groups affiliated to the RSS, like the Bajrang Dal, who consider themselves foot soldiers in the Hindu nationalist movement. The group is well known for its violent demonstrations. Today, they are patrolling the historic city of Agra, where they hope to stop cows from being butchered. For Hindus, the cow is a sacred animal. Aju Chauhan is their fiery and controversial leader. The operation to rescue cows continues late into the night. Tonight, their hopes are dashed by the arrival of the police. Authorities have kept a close eye on the Bajrang Dal ever since a similar operation turned violent 15 days ago. After his group attacked Muslim truck drivers for transporting cows, Aju had to spend a night in jail. But the crackdown has done little to restrain them. Bajrang Dal does not limit itself to ambushing truck drivers. Aju rose to national fame in December 2014 when he was accused of orchestrating the forced religious conversion of a group of Muslim rag pickers an incident that was picked up by the national media and triggered a huge controversy. Since then, hundreds more of these conversions have taken place across the country. Like all radical Hindu nationalists, the young men of Bajrang Dal draw on the ideology of the RSS. The organization promotes these views at training camps across the country such as this one in Uttar Pradesh. 500 students have spent the last 21 days here receiving training in RSS doctrine. They've also been taught how to handle weapons. Today, they're preparing to put their new skills on display at a military-style passing out parade. The RSS is notoriously wary of the media. But with a little help from Aju Chauhan, we were given access to the ceremony. जितने भी सड़क के कार्यक्रम है या क्रांति के कार्यक्रम है जहां हम लोगों को आक्रोश व्यक्त करना है सड़क पर आकर के डेमोस्ट्रेशन करना है प्रदर्शन करना है उस तरीके के कार्य सारे के सारे प्रदर्शन दल कर रहा है। The RSS has honed its ideology over the years, and in Narendra Modi has found its most prominent member. He joined the RSS at a young age and rose through its ranks before becoming a successful politician. Swagat 
Despite attempts to publicly distance himself from the organization, RSS members believe Modi is a leader who will help promote Hindu supremacy. He has come under regular fire for his links to the nationalist organization, most recently for attending an RSS conclave where amongst other things, the country's foreign and economic policies were discussed. The Congress has alleged that the meet is a violation of the Constitution and the government a puppet in the hands of the RSS. The RSS is well known for its chauvinistic military displays and they do so under a saffron banner designed to resemble the robes traditionally worn by Hindu religious leaders. As a result, attempts by Hindu nationalists to influence public policy are often referred to as saffronization. Amongst the nations that the RSS admires the most is Israel. The RSS's growing influence within the government is a matter of concern for many political analysts in India. Gurpreet Mahajan is a professor at the Center for Political Studies. She's convinced that the Hindu movement is determined to have a greater say in how the Modi government shapes policy in the coming years. You know, these groups have always been very close to the Bharatiya Janata Party. And uh, so there is a kind of relationship between them and they do work for them during political election processes and so on and so forth. So they have high expectation once the government, uh, you know, with which they are closely linked uh, comes to power. So they have expectations. We have yet to see how far they'll be able to go and uh, what concessions they can possibly get. Mahajan is tracking the developments closely and believes that the RSS will seize the opportunity to shape the minds of future generations. There has always been a concern that, uh, you know, we, if you have an ideological party with an ideological agenda, they would wish to, they may wish to communicate uh, that through the education. And we are seeing the same kind of concern being expressed now. At the center of the Hindu revisionist project is the complete overhaul of the country's education system. Gujarat is a very interesting model. Many people consider the state a laboratory for the gradual saffronization of India's education policy. Hello. In June 2014, the Gujarat government introduced a set of 10 textbooks for primary schools. They were immediately criticized for their biased interpretation of history and geopolitics. The teacher is cautious in front of our cameras, but a closer look at the content of her textbooks is revealing. Most lessons revolve around the idea of Indian supremacy. For example, on page 22 of a book called Prairnadi 3, there's a very interesting story about how God created the world. He was making bread and he took it out of the oven too early and that's how white people were created. The second time round, he left it in the oven too long and that's how Negroes were born. The book uses the word Negro. And then the last time around he learned from his two previous mistakes and took the bread out just in time and that's how Indians were created. The books were written by a prominent RSS member and ideologue Dinanath Patra. 
Since the BJP was elected, Batra has been appointed to a committee making recommendations on the country's new education policy. Mughals or Mohammedans, a sword in one hand and the Quran in another, they try to convert Hindus into Muslims. But Christians did not, did not use the sword, they used education. In our history books, there are no points to be proud of. So our glorious chapters are diminished and they are not in sight. So we, I want safeguardation of the whole country and whole education. Do you think each and every textbook being used in Indian schools today should be rewritten? Yes. Prime Minister Modi has repeatedly tried to distance himself from the more radical elements within the Hindu movement. He has also tried to crack down on his colleagues in parliament who have become controversial for their views. Meri sarkar ka ek hi dharma hai, India first. Meri sarkar ka ek hi dharma hai, Bharat ka samvidhan. Meri sarkar ka ek hi dharma granth hai, Bharat ka samvidhan. Meri sarkar ki ek hi bhakti hai, Bharat bhakti. But it's easier said than done. Some politicians, like Sakshi Maharaj, appear to have built their entire careers around inciting religious disharmony. A lifelong RSS member and self-styled holy man, Maharaj is a hugely influential parliamentarian. He has been at the center of a political storm almost since the beginning of the Modi administration for his vehemently sectarian views. मुझे लगता है कि जो राष्ट्र का सम्मान नहीं कर सकते ऐसे लोगों को हिंदुस्तान में रहने का अधिकार नहीं है रास्ता खुला हुआ पाकिस्तान जा सकते हैं बट महाराज डजंट सी हिज वर्ड्स एज कंट्रोवर्शियल मैं तो एक संत हूं भगवा मेरे वस्त्र हैं सारे विश्व को शांति का संदेश हिंदुस्तान ने दिया अगर कोई व्यक्ति मेरी बात की बोली लगाता है मुझे गलत कहता है तो मैं खुदा से डरता हूं इस दुनिया में किसी से नहीं डरता क्योंकि मैं सच्चे रास्ते पर हूं मैंने गलत कहा ही नहीं हिज पार्टी माइट डिसएग्री द बीजेपी रिसेंटली पुट हिम ऑन नोटिस फॉर मेकिंग स्टेटमेंट्स दैट इनसाइट हेट्रेड एट अ रैली लेटर दैट आफ्टरनून ही चूजेस इंस्टेड टू स्पीक ऑफ इस्लामिक टेररिज्म अब तो मुस्लिम कंट्री दुबई की छाती पर खड़े हो गए नरेंद्र भाई मोदी ने सारे विश्व को दो हिस्सों में बांट दिया मोदी जी ने कहा एक वो लोग होंगे जो मानवता के पोषक होंगे जो मानवतावादी होंगे जो मानवता के रक्षक होंगे एक वो होंगे आतंकवादी होंगे आतंकवाद का संरक्षण देने वाले होंगे इन दोनों के बीच में युद्ध होगा और आतंकवादी मारे जाएंगे मारे जाएंगे बंदे Maharaj makes no bones about his view that terrorism stems from the Muslim community a message that also resonates within these walls where a very special camp is underway it's barely dawn but here in bareilly a small town in uttar pradesh the day has already begun first it's time for the traditional hindu prayer Over the next 7 days these girls will be fed a steady diet of hindu values and inculcated with military style discipline So we are at the Durga Mahini camp for young hindu girls literally translated it means the army of Durga Durga is one of the fiercest goddesses in uh, Hindu mythology now this camp is open to girls between the ages of 15 to 35 After months of negotiations we were finally given access to film here in June. It's one of many similar Hindu nationalist summer camps for girls to take place across India. Formed in 1991 with the purpose of empowering Hindu women and transforming them into warriors, the Durga Vahini like their Bajrang Dal brothers are also considered a militant wing of the RSS. Dr. Sahab Lekin samne wale ke sar pe maro theek hai 
Some of its followers have come under scrutiny from India's security forces. In 2008, one of the group's leaders, Sadhvi Pragya, was arrested and charged for her alleged role in orchestrating a terror attack on a Muslim-majority town in the western state of Maharashtra. Imagine कर लो कोई भी चीज़ है सोच लो जिस पे आप निशाना ले रहे हो मुझे हमें हिंदुस्तान में सिर्फ हिंदुवादी लोग चाहिए जो राष्ट्र प्रेमियों अपने राष्ट्र से प्यार करें और प्राय अभी तक यही देखा गया है कि जिस जिस देश में ये बाहुल्य हुए हैं इनकी संख्या ज़्यादा हुई है वहाँ इन्होंने दूसरे धर्म को रहने नहीं दिया अफगानिस्तान देख लीजिए आप सीरिया देख लीजिए लेबनान देख लीजिए ऐसे में इसलिए हमें आत्मरक्षा और अपने आप को इतना सक्षम बनाना होगा कि हम किसी भी मुसीबत से आगे लड़ सकें तो आप तैयार कर रहे हैं जी हाँ हमने तैयार कर रहे हैं उस चीज़ को आने वाले समय के लिए अगर जरूरत पड़ेगी तो मैं चाहूँगा कि ये लड़े उनसे ओवर द नेक्स्ट फ्यू डेज द गर्ल्स विल हेयर मैनी वर्जन ऑफ दैट मैसेज अ मैसेज दैट विद टाइम बिकम्स डीपली रूटेड इन दैर साइकी Most of these girls will be married in a few years and Durga Vahini is determined to teach them what to keep in mind when the time comes. But jaise aap ye camp ko kis nazariye se dekhte hain ye Hindu sanctum se matlab Hindu ko sanctity to hona chahiye Hindu ki ladkiyon ne ek saath rehna chahiye unko woh sab kyu kyu se ho raha hai kyunki aaj kal tumhe pata hi hai moments kitna matlab wo kar rahe hain शादी की तो उसके बाद बच्चे पैदा किए उसके बाद तलाक दे देते हैं या फिर मतलब उसे मतलब ऐसे ही रखते हैं सोशल करने के लिए मतलब उसका टॉर्चर करते हैं उसे बेच भी देते हैं अरब देशों में और बहुत मतलब वो करते हैं आपको भी ये सब कैसे पता चला हमें दुर्गा भाई से ही पता चला देर वर्ड्स एको द बिलीव ऑफ द मैन हु आर शेपिंग दर माइंड स्पीकिंग टू द गर्ल्स टूडे इज ईश्वरी प्रसाद a local leader with the right wing hindu group the vishwa hindu parishad महिला को भी काट करके खाना धर्म में माना जाता है हमारे धर्म में ऐसा है क्या हमारे धर्म में ऐसा नहीं है हमारा धर्म महान है बेली आउट ऑफ दैट थीन्स दीज यंग गर्ल्स हैव ऑलरेडी बॉट इन टू दुर्गा वाहिनीज आइडियोलॉजी ऑफ हिंदू सुप्रेमसी एन आइडियोलॉजी दैट रिमेन्स डिस्टर्बिंग फॉर द मेजोरिटी ऑफ इंडियंस but i think the bigger issue is that there are a large majority of people within the majority community who do actually see india as a democratic secular a polity and they do wish to see different uh, groups really coexisting peacefully in harmony so i think some of the ideas they stand for may not really be even accepted by the majority community so the society i hope will be able to put some checks for many indians the aggressive beliefs of the hindu nationalist movement go against everything this country stands for moderate voices will need to be raised over the coming years if my country is to remain true to its secular spirit otherwise our founding father mahatma gandhi's vision of an independent india based on religious pluralism could be derailed by the whims of an intolerant few <laughs>